Episode 18, Fermentation, Creating Life in the Kitchen with Chef Cynthia Louise. Welcome to Thriving with Nature, a podcast that gives you the tools you need to live a modern lifestyle that helps regenerate our planet. And now your host, Hayley Weatherburn. Welcome Thrivers to another episode of Thriving with Nature. I'm Hayley Weatherburn and we are so honoured to have Chef Cynthia Louise back inside her kitchen. Thank you Chef for having us. Thank you for having me. Yay! <laughs> for those of you who haven't uh, been introduced to Chef Cynthia Louise, episode four of the podcast of Thriving with Nature, you get to hear her amazing journey into how she's become one of the world's renowned chefs on the planet when it comes to whole foods and nourishing your organs. Uh, today, what we're gonna do is talk about how to build a healthy gut microbiome and why that's so important. So, Chef Cynthia, tell me about your journey of um, why the gut microbiome is important. Well, <clears throat> it's so interesting because it takes me back to growing soil. Like when I was in my 20s, like I'm 50 in a few months. Mm -hmm. and, but when I was in my 20s, I decided to, I don't know, I got right into gardening. It was really strange, but I got, I was building this, pro I had this property and I was building, um, I was landscaping. I wasn't thinking about food mm -hmm. as such, but I needed soil and I would get soil um, shipped in, like brought in by the truckload and mulch, sugarcane mm -hmm. mulch. And it kind of started there and I started to look at the different quality soils that were coming in from different trucks, from different suppliers, because I was trying to get the cheapest thing I could possibly get. I think I was on the dole then actually. Mm. I'm pretty sure, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> it's, it's true, like I, I, was, I had a child and I wasn't working, but I was getting some sort of whatever. Anyway, <laughs> random. But I remember, I remember, um, and I'm glad you asked this question because I looked at the question yesterday and I was like, ah, oh, that's right. I remember different trucks delivering different soil from different suppliers in the landscaping business. And I remember feeling to myself, wow, that wasn't as good as that one. That one's quite dry. Um, this one's really moist and quite smelly. This one has a lot of um, bacteria and it's starting to smell quite composty and quite shocking. And then some was, some was, you know, some, some, some had lots of living creatures in there. Mm. Mm. And I noticed my chickens automatically went to the, the, the soil with the living creatures in there. Mm. And so I was like, and what I mean by living creatures is all the soil had living creatures in it, but one particular brand, a company, delivery was more prominent. Mm. And I was just like, wow. Like, and if you look in soil and if you pick it up and you stare at it for a minute, mm. you might see something move, not a worm. I'm not talking about a worm or a little animal. I'm talking, you might see the soil just shift like this. Mm. You know what I mean? You think, oh, what's that? What's that? And so from there, I, I thought, oh, I'm gonna get that soil. And that was actually the, probably the most expensive soil in the whole thing. And I, I remember thinking to myself, I'm gonna grow it myself. I'm gonna grow my own soil. Mm. And so then I started playing with compost. And then I started to understand the microbes in the soil and how important it was. And, and I got right into it by, by also years later, understanding that the water just from the tap, watering my garden full of fluoride and chemicals and whatever, was killing those microbes. Mm -hmm. So it was really important. So I remember using newspaper at one point to grow soil, like covering, like, you know, you know, food scraps, then living seaweed, and then dead branches, and then newspaper, and then just making these layers. And I just remember, oh, the newspaper, that will kill the microbes mm. because of the ink in the newspaper. So I started getting right, right to it. And then I understood how my plants felt when I was planting in that soil and how the difference was. And I could just see little differences, mm. but those little differences to me were a lot. There was a lot more growth in a short amount of time compared to the other plants. Was it the sun? Was it where they were at? Were they getting enough water? Was the water, you know, seeping away because my land was like this? And mm. and I thought, no, it's it's the, it's the microbes in the soil. And I think that's where I started to understand the the, the deep benefits of living when we think soil is dead. Mm. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, from that, how did you connect? Uh, you know, the, you notice the differences mm. in the plants to, did you notice the difference in the flavor of the food and or did you notice the difference about what you were eating 
Like, did you see that connection go further deeper into how you felt when you were? I only noticed a difference in the flavour of the food when I grew my own food. I didn't notice a difference in soil. It wasn't until I started becoming interested in biodynamic farming that I noticed the difference in flavour. Awesome. It wasn't my own situation and I was right into permaculture and I had this amazing two acre property and I segregated it off and I'd be rotation of crop and animals and things. I didn't notice it then, but mm -hmm. it wasn't until I got right into that area of farming later on that I was like, there is such a profound difference in biodynamic produce, whether it's animal flesh or it's milk or it's fruit and vegetables to organic. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? And that's when I started to really invest in Steiner's teachings and to really understand the, the 500 method. And it goes 500 and 501, 502, and it goes and goes and goes. And it even goes right down to the appreciation of the top of the soil, the in-between of the soil, the base of the roots of the plants and beyond and beyond and beyond and beyond, as is the encompassing energy of the moon cycle. Mm -hmm. So it was this whole thing. And I just remember even when you're doing one of the systems where you've got to swirl a certain way on a certain oh, wow. moon day, mm -hmm. I remember thinking to myself, that's what's happening here. We're actually growing a childlike substance is soil. And because once we spent, because you know when you're pregnant, well, well, I can say anyway, Not I'm yet. pregnant. Not yet, one day. <laughs> when you're pregnant, <laughs> you, you, you come to this realization, it's like, I must eat, I must not drink alcohol, I must not smoke cigarettes, I must, you know, feed for two. And the soil started to, I started to really recognize that was a baby and I needed to feed for two. Mm. And it was, it was that process and it was only splitting. It wasn't like I, sat there for months and was like, wow, yeah. wow, wow. It was a splitting thing and then I just appreciated, um, yeah, farming methods yeah. and soil. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. It, it's something I, I recently heard in regards to that is our, the flavour is our senses' way of showing what has higher nutrients, mm. what has, um, that, what's more beneficial for us, you know, the ones that um, have that natural. I mean, I think we've all experienced back in the day if you're, in a garden, I had a neighbor that had a tomato and we as kids would go and pull it off and eat it like an apple. You can't do that with a tomato in a lot of the supermarkets these days. Well, you'd be like, why would you do that? That's yeah. weird, it doesn't have much flavor. But these, these tomatoes had so much flavor mm. and so many more nutrients. And as we shared actually in episode four about how some carrots, the, the way it's grown has more nutri nutrition mm than like the um, commercial monocrop kind of carrot. Mm. So oh, totally. um, nutrition equals well, flavor equals nutrition. Yes, right? exactly. Totally. Without you dissecting it. Mm. It is just a nature gets it right every time. Yeah. And it's so true, like without even it's so true because a lot of in the wellness industry, we dissect things to its nutritional parts and that's great and everything. And we honor human you know, human minds to do that. Mm. But really, at the end of the day, when the soil is treated like a living child, like a mm. baby growing, as we breed a baby in our tummies, we're, we're doing the same thing with soil. We're breeding soil in such a way. And that, like, the, the flavour's mind-blowing. Mm. And, and you wouldn't want to dissect the nutritional parts because no. it, is what it, is, it is there, right? Exactly. And, yeah. and so connecting that, Anastasia the books that I like to talk about and read, yeah. we, Anastasia talks about when you forget everything we've taught almost, everything we've learned, and you go back to like if you were a child, and you, and f let's imagine that fruit and vegetables have all their original amazing flavors, like a cucumber doesn't just taste like water, it has mm. so much flavor in it. Our bodies, we don't need to know a vitamin K, vitamin C, our bodies will go, oh, I'm feeling like a cucumber mm. and that's the internal where's my nutrition like that's mm. you, you don't need to understand it no. it's just your body will do that so um ha talking about micro microbiome talking about the microbes in the soil um and then the microbes coming into the gut how did you because you have a love of fermentation we've just been We've just been, I, I'm going to have to share this, this ginger beer ferment, would you call it, a, is it a ginger beer? Yeah, it's a ginger beer. So It has alcohol in it because all ferments have alcohol Ferments. So there's creatures in here. Totally. There's microbes in here and it is so nourishing. So what, 
you know, as a chef, you love the cooking. What attracted you to ferments? And was it in anything in regards to your microbiome, into nourishing your organs, or how did the connection yeah. with ferments come in? It was never about health. It was always about the engaging. It was all about engaging in the process of taking something and watching it breaking down. Fascinating. Yeah. And I find that the life cycle of nature extraordinarily fascinating for me. So you can look at it like compost, right? Compost is the same. I find compost mm -hmm. extraordinarily oh. fascinating, especially when it's you know, looked after and it's a pleasure, right? It's a pleasure to grow soil through compost. But yeah. fermentation for me was never about getting microbes into me or health. I was just, I was just so in, like intrigued that, and I'm <laughs> salivating thinking about it, so intrigued how I could take something like a daikon. So mm. a daikon is a really long radish. It has a wonderful long situation here. It goes into the ground, it sprouts out. It creates great nitrogen for soil. And I can't stand them. I can't stand any of them. They're gross. And, but if I ferment it, wow. oh my God. Wow. It's, it is completely the opposite of what it was in the beginning. And it's been, it's been breaking down and breaking down. And fermentation for me, to watch that become a life, then we've picked it and it's slowly breaking down, but we're, we're helping it ferment by having the right environment, by writing to have the right headspace, by having the right tools, by having the right ingredients, by having the right systems of fermentation, which could mean a, a dry, salty brine, a wet, salty brine. It could be a culture from another ferment. It could be simply um, its own sugars eating up through the yeast in the air. Mm. And so for me, it was like purely just interest it's like nature's just interest. chemistry. It's totally. It's it's like it's mm -hmm. like when you throw an apple on the on on the compost bin or on the on the in the in the bush. Like I always chuck my stuff. <laughs> if I'm eating something, I just throw it on the ground because I know it's going to break down. Mm -hmm. And I've always been like that. And people are like, "Don't litter," and I'm like, "It's a banana skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it belongs back into the earth." Fermentation is like it. it it's such an. It, it's so inquisitive. So it's such an inquisitive thing, and it. And there's so much life becomes in there, like good bacteria grows and bad bacteria on a ferment comes along and kills it and it contaminates, then good bacteria grows again. Mm. That's the life of fermentation. Mm. And I just find it fascinating. I just honestly find it fascinating more that's, than I do health-wise. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. It is the life cycles. I think the more you look into nature and just watch it, yeah. just observing it. Um, something that Dr. Josh Axe, a book I'm reading called Eat Dirt, he talks about the, the balance of our microbes in the gut is about 85% good to 15% mm -hmm. bad. Would you see that, can you kind of see how that actually is similar in the ferments? Oh, that yeah. you need, there's, there's a bit of a, a balance of, yeah. it needs a bit of both to create the bubbliness, the life that's inside it, right? Yeah, yeah we need good and bad bacteria to have a greater immune system to be able to have the ability to fight bad bacteria. Mm. So ferments, <laughs> so, so interesting. I don't sterilize jars. Mm. I wash them out and make sure they're dry completely by air drying, not by cloth. And I don't wash or, you know, take um, the dirt out of my fingernails mm. when I ferment. And I don't use, and I use wood, which carries so mm. much bacteria. Right, and these are the these are the no nos of of um, food safety and hygiene with fermentation. Mm. Now, mm. Yeah. back way back then, when our parents and grandparents and their parents and their parents fermented, they would use the same wooden barrel, and they would take the the, the cow and put the cow's milk. <laughs> they take the cow's milk, and they would churn it into butter, and they would churn that butter in that same wooden barrel, and they mm. would never wash it. And if you take a microscope and look at the side of that barrel, mm, you'll see the life. the life of the good bacteria and the bad bacteria coming along to contaminate and kill it and make it go off, and then it grows good bacteria. Now, you take steel and do that, you can't, you, it's not possible. Mm. The ba bad bacteria keeps growing and then the good bacteria dies and it tries to come back and the bad bacteria, and you've got to catch it at a certain mm. time when it's good bacteria. Mm. And so, like, I just, I just find... 
myself with fermentation, no rules, and I stuff it up all the time. Mm. And it's all energy. Mm. I swear to God, it's all energy. Yep. And it's a really beautiful place to, to dance in. And it's just, it's so fascinating. It's I'm so fascinated by it, actually. I can't believe how I am so fascinated by it. <laughs> At the moment, I'm making apple cider vinegar. It's going to take me three months, right? But um, <laughs> yeah. I'm just fascinated by the rottingness of the colour change, you know? Mm. Yeah, we, we were just in, in her ferment section and uh, these apples, I said, were those apples red? Because there's red spots on the back of the chopped apples. And yeah. I'm like, is it like a red spotted apple? I've never seen it. But it's the colour is slowly breaking down. <laughs> but it's actually not death. It's it's it's. It's everything is just eating and it's like the yeast in the air is hitting the sugar in the apples and the liquidy sugar solution that I created and it's just breaking down and it's going to turn into something magnificent. Mm. And it's kind of like my son Jamin said to me this once and this is really interesting. He said when I die mum I want to be I want to I want to ferment into the soil. I don't oh. want to be cremated. Wow. He said, because I come from life, mm. so therefore I'm going to give that back into life, which is soil. And I was like, that's so cool. That's mm. so cool. I love that because that's what it is. It's not breaking down and dying. No. It's actually creating something extraordinary. I want to feed, yeah, I want to feed the world, feed the life. Um, that reminds me of Avatar. They actually show that. There's yeah, that sort of it. montage where the, the person's dying, the flower goes in, it's life, it gets life. It's just energy transfer. Yep. Um, Everything's energy. Absolutely. All right, so we're talking about ferments. We're talking about how they can help. Uh, they've, they've got microbes. They help create a biodiversity. We, I'm finding more about the more we create um, a biodiverse microbiome in our gut, mm. the more healthy we have, the more we're building our immune system. Mm. Uh, something you've just mentioned about how going back to the wooden, the mm. wooden, you know, where there's diversity here. We're not sterilizing everything. It's not, you know, you're giving yourself the opportunity to be uh, in front of all the different microbes, to be, um, what's the word, in contact with many yeah. different microbes. So um, tell us, how can you, you know, what are some of the basic ferments that people could start with that would start to introduce some different microbes into their world. What is, what's a starting point for someone who goes, okay, I want to yeah. start doing some kind of ferment? I think the, probably the easiest way is a, um, is a wet ferment. I mm -hmm. find that as for a starter person. So a dry ferment is like a salty brine. So you take an animal, a pig for instance, and you cut its leg off and you have its, you know, its thigh and you rub salt all, all over it and you, and you press it there for so many days and you hang it up and dry it and that mm. salt protects that and starts breaking things down. That's got a dry ferment. Okay. Um, and then you can do that with vegetables and whatnot. And then you can have a wet ferment and the wet ferment is the easiest way to do it because a dry ferment, you've got to, you've got to watch it and you've got to make sure you get things submerged mm. under the, the liquid of that salt's bringing and you know, blah, blah. you want to push that down. Now a wet ferment is uh, water and salt. And so if I got a jar and cut up, say, that daikon rubbish that, mm -hmm. that I talked about before and sliced it up nice and thin and I put it into a salty solution, just like the seawater, same kind of saltiness, and I let it sit on the bench for a few hours and I might add a chilli in there, just throw a chilli in there mm -hmm. and I might mwah, bless it and I might put it in a jar and then push the little um, bits down and it's all just kind of sitting on the, you know, push the daikon down and then I close it and put it on my, my, my bench. That is the best way to start because you don't have to keep pushing it down because it already has the liquid in there. Mm. Because a dry ferment on that daikon, if I rubbed it and rubbed it to try and get that moisture out, then I'm going to get a little bit of moisture and the daikon's going to be there and I'm going to have to push it down every day. Mm. But a wet ferment like this, this particular thing that I'm talking about is already submerged in water. So any kind of you know cauliflower or radishes, um, in a in a jar um, with water, salty water solution, then you can add your, like your seeds, like your like flavored you know Jupiter berries or you know mm. bay leaves or um, cumin seeds or fennel seeds or something like that. And then the, the, the next way is your vessel. What what's your vessel? And the easiest way is to go online and get those little lids, and they've got a little um, air plug in there which you fill with water, so then you don't have to touch anything. Yeah. It and does, then yeah, yeah, and you allow the process to break down, and as it's breaking down 
you'll start to see bubbles form. Mm. Once you see those bubbles form, you know that sugar's been eaten up. You know that something's happening. And the more bubbles that form, the greater the position the ferment's in healthy-wise. Mm. Not for us, health-wise. It's always in there. It's always the health of the ferment. And so that's what I recommend, a, a wet solution. Yeah, um, like sauerkraut. Starter. Like that's probably that's the first That's a dry one. ferment. Oh, really? Yeah. So sauerkraut's a dry yeah. ferment. Because you've got to rub the salt into the actual cabbage and then you've got to push it down and make sure that water covers True. it. Yeah. Fascinating. So okay. then you've got to make sure you plug it in properly and it can be easy but it also can be challenging because people mm. sometimes don't plug it in properly and then it starts to breed bacteria. Okay, yeah. And so a, a, a wet ferment with, like I mentioned pickles? before. Pickles, yeah. Pickles. Wet ferment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm half Hungarian, pickles. Totally, baby cucumbers yeah. in a jar, a couple of bay leaves, salty solution, cover it. They're not going to pop up because they're all in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ah, that's oh my right. God, you should do that. Yes. That's actually really cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's so amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, pickles. That's, that's I think, because I grew up with a, my mum's Hungarian and the idea of a salad was... A cut up tomatoes and a pickle. Oh, nice. That's yeah. beautiful. That's awesome. So for some people who may have had uh, ferments, maybe um, because some ferments have that life, that bubbliness, mm. that vibrancy, maybe some people get gas from a fermentation. Mm. What do you say about um, to those people who would love to get some, some kind of... Oneness. Yeah, oneness with some ferments. What, what, what do you suggest that could potentially be happening or is there something else they could try? So first of all, fermentation is a way to digest food so much easier than it's not fermented. Ah, so just put that into context first. So why is someone getting bloated or why is someone getting gassy? Well, their internal ecosystem microbiome uh, mm, at no. its peak of the game. Remember, soil, soil, when we grow soil to plant something, we're looking for optimal flavour and we're looking for diversity and we're looking for yield and we're looking for this whole thing, right? We're soil. Mm. We're, we are soil internally. So we've got to go there first before we blame the ferment. Right. Because that's what we do. You point the finger yeah. at the food, you don't understand. Cabbages make me feel like that. The brassica family, you don't understand. When I eat ferments, I fart and I stink. I'm sorry. The reason why people um, get gassy and and have this really extreme reaction to ferments or get bloated or smell or whatever it might be, it's not the ferment. It's, it's never the ferment because mm. that's easy digestible when we ferment something. Right. It's the human internal you know, ecosystem that we must look at. And that's what we do, we point the finger at food. Mm. We point and we go, you don't understand, I don't like that, you don't understand, I don't like that. But really, we've got to go back to the internal. So the, what, what do we do then? You know, do we go on Google and try and find how do we get healthy? It's not about you being unhealthy. It's about deeply understanding the ecosystem body might have been contaminated with processed type food substances, our environment, the way we think, the laundry we, we do with our contamination of chemicals on our clothes. Mm. It's not just food. Yeah. It's never just food. And so if we can sit there for a minute and acknowledge that, I think, you know, from there you can, you know, start to go within and soil that soil. So see that, see that, that that's a, a message from nature. Something's happening. I'm getting a reaction. Mm. Maybe there's a, it's an opportunity to go, okay, there's something out of balance in my microbiome. Exactly. How can I bring something in? It's an indicator so that exactly. uh, something you were talking about before about um, some people, you know, I'm a little off topic here, but beans, some people, you know, beans make me gassy and they used to make me gassy until I learned to soak them. I know until I learnt to cook them fully, now I can enjoy the most amazing beans. Mm. I like my Mexican stuff. Um, and now it's just, uh, I, it's just nourishing. There's no gas. So, so you think about that. You've mm. taken a dry bean, leg impulse, whatever you want to call it. You've soaked it, you've activated back into life, mm -hmm. right? Fermentation is the same thing. Yes. Things don't rot down and die. They create a life. And that life is so fascinating in the internal microbiome of our gut. It's so fascinating. It's like bread. We look at bread in such a devastating and dogmatic way. Oh, I can't eat that. It's gluten. Oh, I can't eat bread. You don't understand how I feel. Mm. It's never, it's not the fucking bread. <laughs> <laughs> we are designed as human beings and we've, we've, we've done this very cleverly and accidentally. 
where we've, we've somewhere in a kingdom, somewhere in a faraway land, somebody was making bread and they left a bit of that um, dough, uncooked dough out. Mm. And it started to bubble and grow the next day. It was near the fire. So it was really became active. So the yeast in the air um, went into this, this, this raw dough and started to bubble. And then that servant or whoever it was came in. It's a classic story around fermentation. I, I love this. Mm. Came in and saw that and it was like, huh, that's weird. And tasted it. And it was borderline kind of because fermentation goes into alcohol, right? Like mm. it's bought it, that, that's that's funky, but it's well, I'm just gonna bake it anyway. Mm. And from that moment in time, when they were baking, when they fermented that bread, they felt different. They could digest the protein, which is called gluten, because how we digest gluten is we ferment the actual grain, which becomes milled into flour, then becomes a dough, and we ferment it over 36 hours. We are easy to digest it. Mm. And that, to me, is fucking magnificent. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So we point the finger at the grain. You don't understand. It makes me really bloated. It makes my tummy hurt. Those beans, you don't understand. It makes me... It's not the food. It's not the food. It's never the food. Unless you have an anaphylactic uh, response to an ingredient, it's really never the food. It's the internal ecosystem. It really is. Mm. Something that you've just said has really triggered a, a mind-blowing effect inside. Uh, I saw that. You saw it's like <laughs> there was the eyes opening. <laughs> life, there's life and death. We see this as yin and yang. We see this as a cycle, but actually. The, what I, I talk about quite a lot is life begets life. Like life, life begets life. Life creates life. Yes. And so it's not the end of life. It is the creation of another life. Totally. So it's not coming back and dying and that. It's actually creating. It's, it's, it's always a moving forward. And I always talk about nature grows in a natural succession. Mm. It's always growing abundant. We leave nature alone. It grows abundant. So when something's dying, there's this, it's hard for me to articulate. It, and what you're saying is it's life inside these microbes. These are, more life is, come, more life is around death than death. Totally, 100%. That's what my son said. I want to be buried because I will ferment back into life. Isn't that just... Brilliant statement. Absolutely amazing. Mm. So we've talked about microbes we've talked about ferments we've talked about the biodiversity of you know there's so many options you can you can do here and you can build your microbiome mm. but what about this is life inside us mm -hmm. how do we feed our microbiome through our thoughts <laughs> yeah well there's many ways there's our environment there's how we think how we breathe how we move breath is a big part of the digestive system massive um, if we can simply, like I said before, leave, leave food be for a minute, allow it to sit there. We're a part of it, we're a part of nature, it's all encompassing energy. But really, our thoughts, it's the first top of the line of my recipes. It's everything, any mm. recipe I've ever written, if you have a look at any of my recipes, you always see a tag down the end, call it a hashtag, call it what you will, right? It is flashing into the energy of the end result. And I, I remember doing this with my coach like 10 years ago. I started to understand this energy because I would talk about it anyway. And I had to articulate it in my recipes. And so when you're reading a recipe and you're interested in looking after your microbiome and you're interested in making the recipe that's gonna support your microbiome because all natural real food has enzymes and bacteria on there anyway. Mm. Um, you, you, even if you cook them, you still have them on your hand when you lick your fingers, yep. it's all there. And so where thoughts go, energy flows. So for me, the first point of um, the microbes in the gut is the way I think. And I'm a absolute 100% um, proven this in, for, for myself for going through my own personal trauma. Mm. And I've watched myself like just, I've watched some serious stuff happen in my, in my gut. Mm. I stopped pooing, mm. I was backed up. Mm -hmm. um, I started to get this, this little bit of a rash you know, and I was, I was in my thoughts of negativity and worry and loss and lack and heart, whatever it might be, the vibe, the point is mm. that, that there wouldn't matter how much fermented foods I ate. Yeah. You, I was up here in negative land. You, I was just watching an amazing um, teaching session. You were teaching some of the amazing Heal Thyself coaches and you said, 
consciousness creates worlds. Yes. This is a world. Totally. Soil is a world. Plants totally. world. There's there's science showing that if you have conversations with plants, they respond. Totally. So uh, a little bit about what are that? How do you, with knowing that, how do you, you know, cook or create your ferments? We, we put a lot of love in your ferment little room just there <laughs> with the ginger beer. So much love. So what do you do with your thoughts that helps create these worlds? Well, I'm, in, I'm in inquisitive in the first place. So my thoughts aren't in a response of, I don't know if I can do that. I'm simply inquisitive. I'm mm. so intrigued. Mm. So that brings so much joy and fun to the art of fermentation. Because I'm really not interested in the end result mm. health-wise. I'm interested in the process. Mm. By the time I get to the end result, I'm in all manners of fucking love affair with that flavour. Mm. But I'm not interested in the uh, end result of a ferment to get to because it never is the same. Mm. That's another thing. This ginger beer will not be the same the next time <laughs> I do it. And so in my life, I always... I really do always sit in the end result of my existence. I really, really do. But with fermentation, it is the opposite. It is the absolute opposite. It is the process of watching this breakdown within my own conscious participation of that inquisitiveness. Mm. It's fucking fascinating. It is. It is so fascinating to be around um, all my... I've got so many ferments, but it's so fascinating to... Like my kefir is in the fridge. You said to me, you got kefir? I said, yeah, but I can't. Unless, I, unless it's a baby. <laughs> if I put it here and then go out for the day and then not come back that night and then come back next, it's gone. Mm. I've turned it into a complete another different vibration. Yeah. So I've got to be around the kefir to grow it to its, its, its beauty. And I've got to actually be in one with my, you know, state of being. Yeah. It's all consciousness. Not one is more conscious than the other. We're only ever, for me, we're only ever not conscious if we're dead. And that's, mm. that's what my son said to me, mm. is that when I die, I want to be buried so I can ferment because that creates life. Because death is always at the other end. There's a consciousness. Exactly. So we're never, we're, never un, we're never unconscious unless yeah. we stop breathing, but it's another life, right? Exactly. Same with the ferment. That is all life. Mm. It is. Absolutely fascinating. Cynthia, you inspire me. You really do. You, you're, it's not just, I think that's one of the reasons why you're so popular, why uh, people are just getting your online courses and just thriving. Mm. Because it's not just about the food. It's, it's about nourishing your organs. It's about nourishing your mind, your body, your soul. Mm. Uh, it's absolutely awesome. And so, What's really exciting at this point in time is you have a new online course coming out. I do. Oh my tell, gosh. Tell everyone about it. It has actually inspired me to make another one straight away. <laughs> it's like I don't even want to talk about that one. I'm already on to the next one. It's, 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 a, it's such an interesting space actually because when I create courses, um, the energy to them is always about how the person can receive it and how they can actually do it at home. Mm. And so fermentation has been one of the big things that people have asked me to teach them. And I haven't wanted to, to be honest, because it's never the same. Mm. You can't take your sourdough starter to another city and expect it to be the same bread as all mate and yours. It, just, it doesn't work that way. So, awesome. yeah, I, I just never felt comfortable to do that because it would be an attack. Like, oh, my sauerkraut. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> my coconut yogurt didn't turn out like yours. <laughs> and so... <laughs> I decided to add some fermentation, basic fermentation, simple fermentation into this course so one at home can simply do a dry um, fermentation and a wet fermentation. And for one at home to understand how their energy response internally and the environment that the ferment is in matters. Mm. And they matter and the ferments matter. And it, yeah, so the course is really quite spectacular in the fact that there's a little there's a part, there's, actually, there's, there's six recipes in there that really cover that basic fermentation, or the art of fermentation in, yeah. a, in a very basic, skillful way. And that's it's very just, exciting. That's just one part of this online course. Yeah, right? and the yeah. rest is just easy dishes that we can throw together. Light and easy to nourish your organs. <laughs> it's the whole, it's the whole thing. And anyone that's, you know, that's mm -hmm. listening who knows Chef Cynthia and has her courses, it's so simple. You're so much fun in the kitchen. There's just joy. 
I see so many people in your Facebook group, you know, sh watching you in the kitchen and the kids are following yeah. as well. Like there's just, you've, pro you've probably got it by now listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube. It, the, the life, the joy that you bring to all of it. And I just really appreciate for you bringing your presence to Thriving With Nature today and sharing the life inside the food and mm. inside you and it's just absolutely amazing so i'm very very grateful thank you so much for sharing Such a pleasure for those that want the online course i will be putting a link uh below and also uh in the show notes as well if you're on the podcast so make sure you hit, go and hit that and grab yourself a copy because i really like amazing. your podcast because you cover all diversity of different people and and it's not just one subject because it's all encompassing right mm. i might just I might be a chef, but I'm also very intrigued in nature, you know, mm. like, and you have different people come on. It's really awesome. It's really yeah, awesome. Thank you. It's awesome. I love it. So thank you so much, Thrivers, for joining me this week. We've got some more exciting guests, more exciting conversations to have about thriving with nature. Uh, and I'm so blessed that you've been here. Have an amazing day. Uh, talk to you soon. Hey, if you enjoyed listening to my podcast, remember to subscribe to hear more. You also have to come check out the Thriving With Nature website where all of my videos, podcasts and resources are to take what we discuss here to the next level and apply it in real life. I'd love to have you come join myself and many others striving towards living a regenerative lifestyle. Go to thrivingwithnature.com.